Well, welcome to Solar Oregon's How to Go Solar and Storage Workshop. Uh, we do these presentations pretty regularly, so uh, if there's something you want to revisit, you can join a later event, uh, and we'll also record this and post it to our YouTube. Uh, my name is Nicole, and I am a program manager at the nonprofit Solar Oregon. This is a reoccurring workshop, uh, like I mentioned, and we've been delivering uh, how to go solar storage or solar one-on-one webinars and workshops uh, to homeowners and business owners across the state for over 15 years. Our mission is to arm you as the consumer with information you need to make good and informed choices as you explore solar and battery storage. And solar has changed significantly in the past decade and a half. And so we try to make updates to this workshop um, as we receive them. So thank you all for joining today. Just a little bit about the agenda. Today, we're gonna cover how solar works, uh, things um, about your home that can help you determine if your home is right for solar, uh, energy storage, and we'll talk about uh, what that is, uh, available incentives for both solar and storage. And uh, after that, we will talk about how you can get started. So Solar Oregon is a 501c3 nonprofit that has worked to encourage solar and storage adoption in Oregon for over 43 years. Uh, and then we provide reliable and impartial information uh, that's really focused on education. And we also do advocacy as well. Uh, we host solarized campaigns, solar tours, zero energy showcases, as well as ac expert panel discussions on um, a bunch of different topics related to solar and new technologies. Uh, so we are a member-based nonprofit. So thank you to our existing members. And if you're interested in becoming a member, you can find the information on this slide. I'm also gonna just repost those helpful resources that I put in the chat earlier. And these have um, resources to um, the Energy Trust of Oregon for their solar bid tool, our website if you wanna learn more about us, uh, info about community solar. So just some good helpful uh, next steps if you wanna dive a little deeper into solar and storage. And then we have some exciting upcoming events. Uh, we have our Green Energy Series on March 2nd and also on April 6th. Uh, this is another reoccurring webinar that we do, and it focuses on um, different aspects of solar uh, and different technologies. And so uh, it has a broader topic base and uh, just is another space to share uh, information that we are learning about uh, so that you can access it as well. And then uh, Earth Day Oregon is coming up and so that's in April. And so many nonprofits will participate in Earth Day Oregon and have different Earth Day events all throughout the state. Uh, so Solar Oregon is gonna be participating again this year and uh, more to come on what our event will be and we hope you can join us. Also, our annual solar winery tour is coming up in May. So we hope you can join that as well. That's usually really fun. And uh, we have a pretty good crew of speakers who will come and share about solar and agrivoltaics. This workshop series is supported by the Energy Trust of Oregon. Energy Trust is an independent nonprofit established in 2002 that provides resources to help enable customers of investor-owned utilities in our state to use energy efficiently and gain access to renewable energy. They offer key incentives for solar installation. In 2002, uh, also were able to add a battery storage incentive. So thank you, Energy Trust. A few housekeeping notes. Um, uh, we are going to have a Q&A session after this webinar. So if you have any questions that come up while I'm going through this presentation, feel free to drop the questions in the Q&A box. Uh, so that should be an icon um, similar to what is shown on the screen there that says Q&A. Uh, it might um, look a little different, but it should say Q&A. So put any questions in there uh, so we don't miss them. If you um, want to access some of those resources that I had talked about earlier, um, those will be in the chat. 
Uh, if you do put questions in the chat, we might miss them. So just be sure to put them in the Q&A. Uh, we also have a few polls uh, just to learn more about where you're joining us from today so we can keep improving our education uh, and workshops. So I'm going to go ahead and launch uh, some of those polls now. First one is going to be a location poll. See where you're joining from. Thank you. Our next poll is a demographics poll. And that just helps us see um, who is finding this information relevant. Are we reaching everybody? Uh, so it's really helpful if you can put in info there as well for us. Thank you. And then the last one that I'll go ahead and launch right now is uh, an incentive um, poll just to see what your familiarity is with some incentives. And we'll do our last poll at the end of the event just to see uh, what your feedback is from this webinar. All right, well, thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, so our first topic we're gonna look into is how solar works, um, just to share some high level uh, for that. Uh, system components might look like this. Um, so you have your photovoltaic panels or PV panels, and that's what's gonna be on your roof or uh, ground mounted, and that's gonna take in the sunlight. Uh, it will take it in um, and as DC, and then you'll need uh, an inverter or microinverter to convert it to AC, which uh, would be the type of electricity used in your home. Uh, and that would flow into your home and your electrical panel. Uh, and then also for a uh, grid tied solar system, you'll be connected to a utility meter that can measure the flow of electricity in and out of your home um, and is also connected to the grid. So a little bit more about those inverters that I mentioned. Uh, there are a couple different types. Um, a string inverter uh, is gonna be connected to multiple panels. Uh, and then you have microinverters that you can see in that image on the right. Uh, they're gonna be a little smaller and connected to one or two panels. Uh, both of these do work uh, depending on what the needs of your system are and what you and your contractor discuss uh, will be what uh, your system uses. And then uh, most of the solar that we're gonna see in Portland Metro or in other cities will be roof mounted uh, as it's a good utilization of space, uh, but there is also a ground mount option. Um, so that's also something to consider. And then we get asked a lot about solar roof tiles. Uh, this is becoming more common. Um, it is still uh, more expensive than solar panels. Uh, it acts not just as a panel, but also your roofing material. Uh, so um, you can see a picture of it illustrated there. So it really just blends in to the roof because it is the roof. Uh, and yeah, there are certain contractors that specialize in this. So if it's something you're interested in, uh, just make sure you're talking to a contractor who has done it before and has experience with a uh, successful installation of these roof tiles. All right. So net metering, uh, this is how grid tied systems uh, in Oregon currently work. And so it's the process, net metering is a process that allows you to account for the energy you export so that you can then gain credit for it. Uh, and this is uh, illustrated in these two graphs here. So um, in Oregon, we do get some rain and clouds uh, in the winter, uh, but solar still does work. It just, you're not gonna be able to produce as much. So with these net metering credits, it allows you to build up um, credits in the summer months when your production of solar is higher as you have more access to solar resource. Uh, and then um, 
because your grid tied, you can still draw from the grid if you need to. And so uh, you can see the summer month there. You have net metering credit earned, illustrated by the green arrow um, on the left. And then in the winter months, you can see maybe you need to draw from the grid. So you can see that illustrated with the, the red arrow. And this is what your bill might look like uh, if you have a grid tied solar system. Uh, this is an example here, and you can see uh, that your meter is measuring um, beginning at the pay period, at the end of the pay period, and you can see that you have how much you are consuming in your home, uh, as well as how much you are producing with your solar, uh, and then that is calculated, and then a credit uh, is added if you are producing more. Uh, than you are using. And then you can pull on that bank of credits uh, on those winter months when you're not producing as much. Uh, so a question uh, might be, why is this bill not zero? If I have solar, why is my bill not zero? Well, it's a grid tied solar system. So you still are connected to the grid. And so there are those grid connection fees, which you can see. So in this example, it's about $12. Uh, and then um, compared to a general or average energy bill, uh, which is 70 and up, um, this $12 bill is a lot smaller. So um, you can see they have their you know, year-to-date banked excess generation uh, that they can pull from. And so $12 is great um, and you are saving money on that monthly bill. Uh, and then uh, just a little bit about system sizing. So uh, solar is extremely customizable. It's really based on what you your needs of your home are, um, how much energy you are consuming. Uh, other factors that also might play into that are budget, aesthetics, um, available space that you have on your roof. Uh, and then the solar is measured in kilowatts. And so the average size is around eight kilowatts for um, most homes in Oregon. So now that we have kind of that base of how solar works, how do you figure out if solar is right for your home? Uh, there are a couple aspects that we mentioned. So you first um, have to see what your solar access is and how much solar resource you can get in your location. So uh, regardless of your orientation um, or your location in the state, the way your roof is oriented has a huge impact. Uh, and so you can see in this diagram here, uh, so south facing roofs are gonna be ideal for solar. Uh, both west and east facing roofs can also be great, but you'll rarely see solar installed on a north facing roof. Um, as that's going to get um, not enough solar resource. Another factor is shade. Uh, so if you have a lot of trees, that's going to impact how much sun your panels can access to produce you energy. Um, but don't be sad because trees are great and they have a lot of other benefits for your home. Uh, and there are other ways you can get involved in solar. Let's say if you live in a really shady area and installing solar on your home is not maybe the right move for where your roof is uh, orientated, then you can maybe participate in community solar, which there's a link in the chat uh, if you want to learn more about community solar programs in Oregon. And then another factor is going to be roof complexity. So if you have an extremely complex roof, uh, like the one picture on the left, it's going to be more difficult to install those panels. Um, it's going to be more ideal to have a simple roof like the one pictured on the right. Uh, and, you know, you can have different roof configurations or ways that contractors can work around some things, but it is something you want to keep in mind uh, when you're thinking about going solar. Another thing is roof condition and age. So solar panels, um, if they get installed on a roof, uh, but then you need to replace your roof, you'll have to uninstall those panels, uh, put on the new roof and reinstall the panels. So that can cost a lot of money. Uh, so 
when considering solar, you want to really think about the age of your roof. And maybe if you're looking to, to update your roof, you do that first and then add solar. Um, it could definitely help you save money uh, as well as you're working to make your home more energy efficient before you are looking at your system needs for solar. Roof structure can also impact uh, how solar is installed on your home. Uh, there are specific requirements uh, for engineering on uh, what is needed for solar. And so that is something to keep in mind. Um, if you have more modern trusses in your home um, with that extra support, it usually you'll be good. Uh, but sometimes with rafters, depending on how those are, uh, constructed, uh, there might be a need for extra reinforcement, and this can cost a few thousand dollars. So that is something to keep in mind. And if you do need to do more work with an engineer, that could increase the cost as well. All right, so now we can dive right into battery storage. Uh, so it's important to know that your solar system by itself doesn't allow you to use your solar uh, when there's a power outage. To do this, you need to add a battery. Uh, this ability to use power when the grid is down is known as energy resilience. So solar and battery storage are complementary. Uh, the solar will make the battery more effective by recharging it, and your battery allows you to access that solar independently from the grid. And this is what a uh, solar and storage paired system might look like. You might have your storage uh, battery in the garage uh, with conduit runs to connect it to your panels and then having roof mounted solar there. So power outages can vary in their causes and frequency and duration. We just had that snowstorm uh, in January. So that that impacted a lot of communities in Oregon um, and their ability to access power. Uh, there are other things that can impact or cause an outage, um, such as wildlife. Uh, we also have what is called public safety power shutoffs. The first one of these was in 2020 in Oregon. Um, and as we see more fires, those could increase as well. Uh, and then in the Pacific Northwest, we also have uh, the potential for the Cascadia uh, seismic event. So when considering, you know, setting up your system and what you want from it, uh, it's really good to think about, you know, what type of outage are you hoping to endure and what are your priorities um, if there is an outage? So when picking a battery, there are many good products on the market, uh, but due to manufacturer certification requirements, you might have contractors that specialize in certain brands. Um, so it's always good to get you know, multiple quotes from contractors um, so you can see what your options are for solar and storage. You cannot mix the battery brands in your system, but you can have different size modules under the same brand. Um, so let's say you're looking for something small and you have like a small, uh, three kilowatt hour battery, and then you decide, well, maybe I'm going to need a little bit more and you can add that same brand, but different size battery, um, to, to your system. And most batteries are between nine and 14 kilowatt hours of capacity. There are bigger ones and smaller ones. Uh, many of the batteries on the market right now are gonna be lithium ion phosphate. And then um, there are a couple options when you think about having that battery backup um, to back up your home, uh, to do a whole home backup. Uh, if you pull in a lot of or consume a lot of energy, that's going to be really expensive. You have to add a lot of batteries. Um, so there's something called a partial backup where you can select specific parts of your home that you want to back up when the grid goes down um, or if there's an outage. And this gives you um, some flexibility there to prioritize, you know, maybe you want a light on in a certain common area or uh, certain outlets or a refrigerator backed up. Because um, if you do try to back up your whole home, you will need a lot of batteries for that. 
when you get a partial home backup, the way you divide your home into sections that are backed up and sections that are not is based on the breakers in your electrical panel. So when you've selected the circuits you'd like to receive that power, your contractor will set that up so those are backed up by the battery. They can do this with something that's called an essential loads panel or a critical loads panel. Um, there's also some new technology on the market that have like smart electrical panels uh, that give you some flexibility on what loads uh, you want your battery backup to go to. And then battery sizing process. Um, thinking about that, that's going to require some discussion with your contractor on what your consumption is, what are your priorities with your system, uh, and a good way to think of this process is the trade-off between two questions, which are what needs power and for how long. Um, items, like I mentioned earlier, that are most frequently backed up include refrigerators, uh, lights in common areas, and a couple of outlets so you can charge laptops, cell phones. And then um, thinking about uh, if you're interested in installing a battery, when you install, it can affect both the system design and price. Uh, so there are two options. You install solar and battery at the same time, or you can add battery to an existing system. Um, there are a lot of incentives right now out for battery storage. Uh, so we're seeing people who are adding battery storage to their existing system. Uh, but there are some things to consider. If you uh, don't add them at the same time, uh, you might have to reconfigure your system. There might be some additional costs um, when adding it later to make sure that that battery works with what your current system is set up as. Um, and so that's just something to consider. So if you know you want to do solar and battery, it is going to be easier and a little bit more cost effective to add them at the same time. It uh, doesn't mean you can't add it later, but just a good thing to keep in mind. And then uh, batteries do require space. Uh, so based on a national electrical code, uh, they can't be in a crawl space or cupboard. Um, so sometimes you'll see them installed in a garage or you'll see them installed on the side of the house. And now we're gonna jump right into incentives. Uh, one of the Federal incentives is the Solar Investment Tax Credit, or ITC, which is a dollar for dollar uh, tax credit, meaning that you can reduce the taxes you owe by 30% of the cost of your solar and or battery storage installation. This is an incentive that you don't receive immediately and you have to apply for when you file your taxes. So note if that you don't owe enough taxes in the year which you install, you can claim this credit over a few years. Uh, disclaimer, we are not tax professionals at Solar Oregon. Uh, we just are sharing this information for educational purposes. Um, that being said, there's a few things to just keep in mind is ITC covers both um, solar and home battery storage, and it applies to traditional solar panels, as well as the solar roof tiles we looked at earlier. Uh, this incentive is pretty straightforward. Um, there is a lot of information online that is not accurate um, or could be misleading with this. So it is great um, to work with your tax professional just to make sure you're claiming this correctly so that you can receive the best benefit for this tax credit. And then another uh, incentive is going to be the Energy Trust Solar incentive and then they also added the storage incentive so you can see for solar you can get four hundred dollars if you're a pge customer or 450 for a pacific power customer uh, really we're finding that more there are more incentives uh, right now to add storage to really help with energy resilience uh, so you can see here that the storage uh, rebate, or not rebate, uh, incentive is $250 um, dollars per kilowatt hour with a maximum of $3,000. So that can help really make those batteries more uh, affordable. And there's also a solar within, within reach incentive. Uh, this is an energy trust program as well. Uh, and so there is a dollar per watt uh, incentive for solar, and then also a um, 
$750 per kilowatt hour incentive for home battery storage. Uh, and so the income uh, qualifications for this are on um, their website. And I have that link in the chat for Solar Earth and Reach if you want to look into that and learn more. Uh, and then, for example, for a household of four, the threshold would be uh, $120,252. There's also the solar and storage state rebate. Uh, so this is through the Oregon Department of Energy. There's a max incentive for solar up to $5,000, and then storage is up to $2,500. Uh, there is... Uh, a caveat here right now that if you have to install the storage at the same time as the solar in order to access that storage incentive. Uh, so that's important to keep in mind if you're thinking about, you know, adding, adding a battery now or later. Um, with the Energy Trust of Oregon, as well as this Oregon Department of Energy rebate, there are a list of approved contractors that you have to work with. Uh, so Energy Trust has trade ally contractors that you can see on their website um, and go through the bid request tool. And then uh, the Oregon Department of Energy has their list on their website. So before we look at some example budgets, uh, some reasons that uh, solar can vary. Uh, we'll kind of dive into those and then also just kind of recap um, some reasons that storage can vary in cost as well. So system size can affect the cost, re-roofing, structural analysis, or reinforcement uh, for solar. And then for storage, uh, installing that solar and storage together or adding the battery afterward can impact the amount of incentives you can access. Uh, installation um, that maybe is complicated where it has to be far from the electrical panel or um, you're adding multiple batteries, things like that um, can change the cost. And then uh, if you have an essential loads panel to do a partial home backup or maybe a smart panel that you're looking at adding, that can change the cost as well. And now we'll just jump into some budgets. Um, this is an example budget if you were just to get solar. Uh, so if you just got solar and you're a Pacific Power customer uh, or PGE customer, you can see in the first two columns uh, what that might look like. And then the last two columns have uh, if you're income qualifying uh, for a Pacific Power customer or a PGE customer. So um, for all of these budgets, we, we went with the average size of a system at about eight kilowatts. And so looking at that, these are just estimated costs um, for solar. You can access some of those solar incentives uh, and then the state rebate as well. Uh, and so that'll bring your out-of-pocket costs down by a few thousand dollars. And then you also can apply for that federal tax credit. And that'll be um, when you are filing the year's taxes. And like we mentioned, you can use this for multiple years if you don't have enough tax liability uh, in that first year that you installed the system. And this one is a sample budget if you were to get solar and storage. Again, with an eight kilowatt solar system, and then we're looking at kind of an average size battery at 10 kilowatt hours. And so your costs are gonna be higher because you have, uh, initially because you have that battery, uh, that you are adding. So you have uh, solar paired storage, uh, but you can see you can access some of those additional storage incentives, uh, which can bring the cost down pretty significantly, um, saving anywhere from $10,000 uh, to $20,000, uh, depending on what customer you are. And then you can also get that federal tax credit. So for that federal tax credit, it can be applied not just to solar, but also to storage. So that'll help as well um, in decreasing the costs. And then this last budget is looking at if you were to do solar and then add storage after. Uh, so the initial cost is gonna be a little bit higher because um, you're getting them done separately. 
Uh, so you might need some different changes in your system to accommodate that battery. But you can see, you can still access the energy trust incentives for both solar and storage. Uh, the state rebate, you can access the solar um, and rebate for that. But um, because the, the storage was added after, you cannot access the storage rebate from the state. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. Uh, and then you can still uh, apply for the federal tax credit for that solar and storage. So how do you finance your system? Um, many people will finance uh, just because it could be um, a lot just to pay out of pocket. So there are specific loans that are tailored to solar. Um, installers you work with might have financing partners uh, or your bank might have that option. Uh, so those are some options you can look into. Um, there are also um, other financing options out there. One thing to keep in mind is like, because it is a big purchase, you just want to make sure that you're getting some opinions from multiple contractors on what the cost is going to be for your system, and then comparing that um, and maybe even asking a finance professional just to make sure that you're making the right decision for your household. So how do you get started? Uh, besides offering incentives, Energy Trust also has a certification program for contractors to ensure high quality of workmanship. So Energy Trust trade ally contractors have been rigorously vetted uh, and they are the only contractors who can offer the Energy Trust of Oregon solar incentive. Uh, and so um, I'm going to repost those resources in the chat just in case anyone joins later. Um, there is the Energy Trust link as well as their solar bid tool. And so if you're like, okay, this is interesting to me. I want to learn more. I want to connect with a contractor. That solar bid tool um, is free to request a bid from, and you can get connected with um, one of those Energy Trust trade allies. Um, and this is just reiterating, it's good to get multiple bids from different contractors. Um, work with a trade ally, uh, check their reviews. Um, you can ask to um, see like how many projects they worked on maybe, or get a reference from one of the other homeowners they have um, installed an assist, uh, a system on their home for. Uh, so, but yeah, really the best place to start um, is gonna be that bid tool. Uh, so you can get connected to a trade ally who is vetted and, um, you know that you're connecting with a contractor that has a good reputation and is trusted. So what is installation like? Uh, once you go through the process of comparing those multiple bids from different contractors, working through you, your needs uh, for a system and what your priorities are to have solar and or storage, uh, you and your contractor will review a contract, you sign the contract and then you'll go through these steps. Um, your contractor will handle permitting, apply for energy trust incentives and state incentives on your behalf. Uh, and then um, permitting can take two to 12 months. Um, it, it hasn't been taking that, like the full 12 months, that was more during like COVID time. Um, so we've seen that time frame come down a little bit, but it's just good to, to keep in mind that permitting can take a little bit. Uh, but as soon as the permitting is complete, um, it's the installation process is one to two days, uh, depending on your system. Uh, and so that can be relatively quick. And then after your system is installed, your contractor will manage uh, permit inspections. Uh, they'll coordinate the installation of your meter. And this meter will be a bi-directional meter so it can measure that flow of electricity out from your system and also measure what you're pulling from the grid. Uh, and then the, the contractor will also schedule the interconnection with the utility. Uh, interconnection can take a couple weeks, but after you've been interconnected, you are all set and your system will be producing clean, renewable power uh, from the sun uh, falling right on your property. So 
uh, really exciting. And now we are to the Q&A. So just a reminder, throw any questions you have in the Q&A box. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up now. Um, and I'll also do the last poll uh, for today, which is just asking about what you thought about this webinar, what we can do to make it better. So I'll go ahead and run that while I check the Q&A box. All right. Um, and so the first question is, will this presentation be available for viewing later? And yes, um, we will go ahead and post this recording to our YouTube uh, channel. And uh, we also have some other good resources on there uh, that you can access. 